What do jaw-dropping landscapes, northern lights, and majestic ponies all have in common? Well, there's a little volcanic island in between the Greenland Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean that goes by the name Iceland. I want to show you why Iceland is a photographer's dream location. But first, we have to go all the way back to 2016, my first time on the island. Chapter 1. This was actually my first time ever leaving North America for a paid creative job and I was really nervous. All I had was my GoPro and a Canon point and shoot camera and my friends trusted me to make a video for a really big brand. This is Forrest and Brian, two of my close friends that I went on this trip with. Me in Iceland. <laughs> we got our small rental car that would be our chauffeur for the next few days while we traveled around the island. The first thing we did after getting our rental car was head to the city center to photograph this beautiful church. The light was going absolutely crazy, and I have to say these are a couple of my favorite photos from the trip right off the bat. This church really resembles what Reykjavik is in the city of Reykjavik, and if you've ever been there, you'll see this church definitely looming in the horizon. It's the tallest thing in the city, and it's really cool to look at. We also had a chance to go inside the church, which I was really thankful for because one, I didn't set a flame when I walked in through the doors, and two, it was just a beautiful architecture inside the building. The light coming in through the windows was gorgeous, and there was just a lot of people appreciating the architecture. We wanted to experience a little bit more of Iceland before we went to bed that night, so we drove right outside the city and we were in for a treat. These landscapes were nothing compared to what we were about to see, but we are still blown away by them nonetheless. The next day, we woke up and headed out to an area called the Blue Lagoon. Uh, we didn't go all the way to the Blue Lagoon, but we did get to experience the area around it and the colors and textures of these rocks and, and the blues from the, the road and the water and the sky just lend their way to some really beautiful photography. So you're probably wondering who we came to Iceland for. Well, it was for a drone company called 3DR, and it was one of the first consumer drones to hit the market before they started making the Mavic and the Mavic Pros. This drone definitely had some technical issues, but we were able to figure it out. And this footage was literally us just pulling over and plopping the drone up into the air. I knew instantly that this was gonna be something very special. The only downside is that all this footage was shot on a GoPro 4. So I wanna emphasize, you don't need the best gear to create some really cool stuff. Also, I want to make it very clear, we didn't know the drone laws coming to Iceland. There weren't actually even drone laws set up yet. Like this was before DJI Mavics were popular and people were flying drones all over. So please bear with me. This footage is from 2015, so it is old and there wasn't quite as many laws as there are nowadays. This area is called Kirchfell and it is one of the most photographed areas of Iceland. We took the drone out and wandered our way over to photograph this beautiful waterfall as well as this basically mountain in the background. All these photos were shot on a Canon 5D Mark II, which is incredible that you get this quality of image, especially for landscape photography. Today, it still holds up the, the test of time. So if you're looking for a cheap DSLR camera body that you want to try out, look up a Canon 5D Mark II. It has some of the best skin tones that I've ever noticed in a camera. So. To our surprise, we actually got to witness the Northern Lights for my personally first time ever. And I was blown away, like absolutely shook that these beautiful colors were just floating and fluttering through the sky. And I will say that we actually have a better experience later on in the video. So stick around for that because even though this is crazy, it gets crazier down the road. The Blue Lagoon is a massive tourist attraction, and this next day we actually drove out all the way to it. Um, prior to that, we were just hanging out around the road area, but we went all the way out to the Blue Lagoon and got a photograph. The area, we walked in, took our cameras really early in the morning, so no one was there yet, and we flew our drone above it, which is crazy to see these really, really rich blues contrasted with the dark rocks of the surrounding area. It made photography and, and the drone piloting so easy. I'm just throwing this thing up in the air and taking some videos, and it's coming out looking absolutely spectacular. Also, the photography here is great. I mean, the, again, the blues and the blacks and the contrast of that really made for some great imagery as well. As Forrest's flannel also popped me a lot, so I took some photos of that. Basically, our whole trip consisted of us driving around Iceland, so bear with us as we drive all the way over to this beautiful lighthouse. There's always these birds that became so attracted to the drone, and, and you'll see that play on throughout the video. Matter of fact, we get some really cool videos of birds flying with the drone later on.
So we hit a sign. On our way back from shooting this waterfall, we ran over this sign and we pulled over and tried to make use of it for at least to take some cool photos, as well as just photograph this ridiculous road. I mean, it was just a straight long stretch of nothing but beautifulness and we wanted to take some photos of that. So that's what this is, pulling over the rich greens and, and the, this, again, the texture of the road. It just complements each other so well for these photos. So growing up in the Pacific Northwest, I was definitely spoiled with my fair share of waterfalls, but Iceland puts all that to shame. These waterfalls are every few hundred yards while you're driving down the highway and you can just pull over and look at them. Absolutely insane. Again, just plopped the drone up, flew a little bit, and got these videos of this waterfall in all of its glory. Forrest, where are we? Skagafoss? Skagafoss. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know how to say anything here. Look at it. <laughs> this waterfall in particular is one of the most iconic waterfalls on Iceland. It is called Skogafoss and it is one of the biggest waterfalls on the island that is easily accessible. When you're driving on the highway, it really is just a two minute pull off and you're at this incredible waterfall. It also sets the coastline of what Iceland used to be. So where that cliff kind of is, is where the actual coastline was at one point. As I mentioned earlier, we got some of these really cool shots with the birds, with the drone flying over and just showcasing kind of the scale of this waterfall as well as like the surrounding area. I mean, this thing is just a monster standing in the middle of nothing. Just had to point my camera at this thing and take some photos. And I mean, these photos make me really happy. It brings me back to this moment. And as you can see, it's just a really spectacular place. Dude. Yeah? So much good stuff. Our room. <laughs> Our humble abode. Our humble abode. That night we stayed in a town called Vic, really beautiful town, small, quaint, and obviously had to get some Red Bull, Mountain Dew, and Icelandic snacks for the next morning for our adventure. This is also a special Icelandic candy bar. It's called a Twix. If you did not know this, Iceland is known for their ponies. They're actually called Icelandic ponies, and they're these beautiful horses that live on the countryside, and we had to pull over and take some photos of them, and this is for us kind of becoming best friends with one of these horses. Now you might be wondering where exactly we are driving in this clip and we are actually driving to this. This is a US Navy plane crash from 1973 that is still stranded on the island to this day. You were previously back in the day able to drive out to it. Now people have to walk miles to get to this location. So I feel very special and lucky to be able to have the opportunity to have seen this thing and flown my drone over it and kind of take some photos of the area. I mean, it's really surreal kind of driving out into the middle of nowhere. And then all of a sudden you see like what looks like it might be a plane crash in the distance and you pull up and it is, it's it's pretty surreal. And, and I've personally never experienced anything like that in the past. Uh, the sun set just as we got there as well. So we got some great blue hour and just some like dusk and some, some of those oranges and reds in the back make the plane pop so much more than it would have if they weren't there. We spent another night in Vic, and that next morning we drove to a place called Dir Lahole. If you guys have ever been to Iceland, or if you want to go to Iceland, this is a spot that you need to visit. It is essentially a beautiful lighthouse on top of a massive cliff overlooking the entire Icelandic coastline. It was just one of those places you were able to drive your car up, park, and walk a few hundred feet and see these beautiful landscapes and architecture. And to me, some of these clips are my favorite from the whole trip. I had Forrest kind of be the one walking around taking photos while I kind of used the drone to photograph that. Just capture the area as how I saw it with a super wide angle lens. So for these, I was using a 16 to 35. I wanted to kind of exaggerate the the scope of it all. So I kind of use that really wide angle lens. Looking back on it, I do wish I would have taken some more close-up shots, but I still really like how these all came out. Also, just look at these moody tones and the greens. Those aren't really edited. That's kind of just how the place looks. Makes you feel kind of warm and cozy, but also terrified at the same time. And again, photography here, it's just like a dream for photographers. So if you ever have an opportunity and you have a camera, please go to Iceland. Quick side note, this is one of my first times kind of directing anything or attempting to direct something. Uh, in reality, it was just me and my friends driving around this island and trying to capture as much beauty as we can. But I was also trying to get some directing experience kind of, and it was just a really big learning experience for me. I was really young here and I didn't really know what I was doing. So I was trying to figure it out. And I appreciate Brian and Forrest for allowing me to come along on this trip and make some really cool stuff with them. Side note, I wanna live in this house when I get older.
That night when we arrived back to Vic for another night of staying there, we drove up to this cemetery and this church. There's this cliff in the background that we wanted to photograph. So we found a side road and drove down to it. These are some of my favorite clips from the entire trip. I mean, we are literally flying with birds and I don't think there needs to be much words just taking this footage of Iceland's beauty. I definitely fell in love with the town of Vic while I was here. It's such like a small quaint town and it, I don't know, it just brought such cozy vibes and made me feel kind of like at home on a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. So could you imagine growing up going to school and like soccer practice on this island or in this town? Just absolutely spectacular. And I was still learning a lot and this goes to show how much I was actually learning. I had decided to try to fly my drone over to that massive glacier in the background there. The glacier was about two miles away and I tried to get the drone to fly all the way out there and on the way back the battery got very very low, alarmingly low to the point that the drone actually died and we watched it fall out of the sky. So we're at a glacier in southern Iceland and we just got the drone about 5,800 feet away and on the way back we lost track of it and thought we could fly it back and uh, it went down maybe a quarter or a half a mile away and Jake has found it. So I think he gave us a thumbs up. You got it? Whoa, let me see it. This thing's a champ, dude. It's fine, isn't it? Yeah, I took off, man. It was like full Once spirit. the drone was secured, we did take <laughs> no. some test flights to make oh sure that God, I was still dude. flying all right. It's totally fine. And as we were taking those test flights, we found these Icelandic ponies that decided they want to go on a little bit of a run. This clip in particular, I think about often because it was the first time I felt like I had actually captured something special while I was on the island. I knew the waterfalls were cool, but this moment in particular with these horses running just plays in my head over and over again. And I really like how these came out. As well as these photographs, like this place is just unreal and looking back on these images brings me such special feelings of like adventure and travel and friendship and just kind of learning more about myself and photography and cinematography. This is the Glacier Lagoon. It is a very popular tourist attraction in Iceland and we actually saw a seal diving into the water as well as just flew over the top of all this while the sun was setting. I'm gonna just let these photos speak for themselves because I don't think there needs to be a lot said about these photographs. Behind the Glacier Lagoon, there's also this basically an ice beach and it's pretty crazy because these pieces of ice look like actual glass balls and they're just sitting there on this black sand and the contrast of the two, again, is just a cheat code for photography and cinematography. So it was insane to me that after a week of being on the island, I was still finding new compositions and new things to photograph, new textures, new emotions, new feelings, new lighting. It just did not stop. And on the drive back that night, it even got more exciting. So being the passenger on the drive back, I took these photos out of the window of our car and you can see a little bit of green starting to appear in the sky and that meant that the northern lights were possibly gonna come Crazy. out. Dude, you can kind of see it. So we pulled over and we were blessed with one of the most incredible fluttering experiences I've ever seen. The northern lights in all of its glory just fluttering around the sky. And one thing I distinctly remember is Forrest telling us to stop photographing it and to put our cameras down and just, just look and take it in. I won't ever forget that. Even though I have these photographs to look back on, I still never will be able to re replicate the feeling that I had while watching these insane lights flutter throughout the sky. And this went on for probably a good two hours of just absolute madness. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. This is honestly one of those moments in life that I will never forget. And I truthfully hope everyone gets to experience it at least one time because it was like, I'm not a religious person, but this did feel like almost a religious experience. Before we left that night, I took this photo and it's essentially my face reflecting the glass of the car window and the Northern Lights in the background. And if that doesn't sum up the trip, I don't really know what does. I mean, that's basically all we did the whole time was drive around, capture amazing moments and get to experience one once in a lifetime things, so pretty spectacular. This video is much more than just a travel video. It's a video about why I love Iceland and why I love photography so much. And I hope you can see that through this footage and all these photos. The quality of these cameras basically compared to what your iPhone can do today. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one and I appreciate you for sticking around. If you have made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Share the video with a friend. It helps me out tremendously. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.